The owner of an Arizona gun store is fed up with the results of the election, and one way that he is going to try to get some revenge is refusing to sell guns to anyone who voted for Obama. His name is Cope Reynolds. Um, he, the, the decision that he had uh, is, is talked about in a letter posted on the website Ammo Land, which, oddly enough, I've never happened across. <laughs> um, but he says, if you voted for Barack Obama, your business is not welcome at Southwest Shooting Authority. You have proven that you are not responsible enough to own a firearm. Uh, I like that for once, the owner of a gun store cares about how responsible <laughs> potential yeah, gun buyers will time. be. Yes, yeah, so you actually see the picture there. They posted a sign right. out front so that people wouldn't waste the time walking into the store. So that's nice of them. And actually ran a full page ad exactly. in the local paper too. Yeah, that had to cost so some money. So this is on their website, it's at the front of their store. They ran a full page mm -hmm. ad, which is just so ridiculous. And I just ironically love that they, like you talked about that they use the word responsible because look, you can argue that somebody who voted for Obama does not agree with your your politics and your political views and all that kind of stuff. But I mean, when you look at what Obama has done on gun control, it's really nothing. Everybody's yeah, it's, afraid. Well, it's actually less than nothing. He's opened an internet friend sent some eye-opening information about the most evil murderers in America. The Fort Hood killer was a registered Democrat Muslim. The Columbine shooters were too young to vote, but their families were registered Democrats and openly liberal. The Virginia Tech murderer wrote hate mail to President Bush. Gee, I wonder who gave him that idea. The Colorado theater killer was a registered Democrat, a staff worker on the Obama campaign, and an Occupy Wall Street participant. He was as liberal as he could possibly be. The assassin of kindergartners up in Newtown was a registered Democrat who hated Christians. Gee, are you seeing a pattern here? The most brutal, vicious crimes in America are being committed by liberals with guns. How could the media have missed that connection? Dr. Lyle Rossiter, a prominent psychiatrist, makes the case that liberalism is a mental illness. And he spells it out in his book, The Liberal Mind. So, want to keep guns out of the hands of psychos? We now know where to focus. The liberals of America try so hard to strip others of their rights. Perhaps we should give them a taste of their own medicine. You can argue that somebody who voted for Obama does not agree with your your politics and your political views and all that kind of stuff. But I mean, when you look at what Obama has done on gun control, it's President really Obama's use of executive power is under increasing scrutiny for its impact on both the free market and personal freedom. What he calls Operation Choke Point takes this strategy to a whole new level. Unless Operation Choke Point is stopped, it will shred the Bill of Rights and violate the separation of powers in our Constitution. So what is Operation Choke Point? Here's how it works. First, federal departments under Obama's control target legal industries they wish to regulate or destroy. They have already identified a list of industries the president believes are undesirable. These completely legal industries include gun and ammunition sales, fraud investigations into those industries. They target not only the businesses, but banks, payment processors, and other financial institutions those industries use. Remember, businesses need banks to survive and payment processors to complete transactions. Those banks are intimidated by federal agencies into cutting off relationships with the businesses on Obama's hit list even if they've never done anything wrong. Payment processors are also forced to cut ties with companies. The result, legal businesses lose their banking relationships and are forced out of business. When you look at what Obama has done on gun control, it's really nothing. This is happening. Since Operation Choke Point began, Dozens of subpoenas have been issued to banks that have been forced to cut ties with thousands of customers just for engaging in what President Obama believes is the wrong kind of business. The agencies involved are also using the investigations to collect mountains of personal data on American spending habits and personal choices. Everybody yeah, is afraid. Well, it's actually less than nothing. He has opened up previous restrictions. The, the, the greatest failure we've had with regards to, to gun violence in some respects is what, what is known as Fast and Furious, which was a program uh, under this administration and how it worked exactly, I think we don't know precisely, but where thousands of automatic and, and AK-47 type weapons were, were given to people that ultimately gave them to, to drug lords. They used those weapons against, uh, against their own citizens and killed Americans with them. And this was, a, this was a program of the government. For what purpose it was put in place, I can't imagine. But it's one of the great tragedies 
related to violence in our society, which has occurred during this administration, which I think the American people would like to understand fully, it's been investigated to a degree, but, but the administration has, uh, has, a, has carried out executive privilege to, to prevent all the information from coming out. ...on bringing guns into some national parks. Right. That's it. If you're a gun owner, you should have loved the last right, four years. Right, and people love to just say, oh, well, and I think that this is true, that, that gun sales do increase, you know, after Obama's elected because they think, oh, he's going to take away all of our guns. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? He didn't bring up gun control. I mean, neither candidate really brought up gun control at all, yeah, even after we had the mass shooting in Aurora. Citizenship means standing up for the lives that gun violence steals from us each day. I've seen the courage of parents, students, pastors, police officers all over this country who say, we are not afraid. And I intend to keep trying, with or without Congress, to help stop more tragedies from visiting innocent Americans in our movie theaters and our shopping malls or schools like Sandy Hook. Neither candidate took a stance on this. Michael Bloomberg called out both of them mm -hmm. for refusing to take a stance on gun control. Um, you know, when it finally did get brought up in the debates, they both skirted the question. Romney made it sound like it was a single parent's fault if, if somebody goes out and, and shoots somebody with a gun. And yeah. he mistakenly said that automatic weapons are illegal, which they're not. The automatic weapons ban is actually expired. So to say that that anybody who voted for Obama is, is not responsible enough to own a gun, I'm assuming that you mean that they're not responsible in caring about their Second Amendment rights. Well, guess what? Obama has literally done nothing to infringe on your Second Amendment rights. My final point, can we bring back up the, the sign that he has in front of the store? Uh, I love that the picture has an AK-47. What, what are you selling yeah, AK-47s for, man? Come on. Uh, yeah. Are there a lot of liberals running around thinking, man, I want to buy an AK-47? Exactly. Yeah. The Fort Hood killer was a registered Democrat Muslim. The Columbine shooters were too young to vote, but their families were registered Democrats and openly liberal. The Virginia Tech murderer wrote hate mail to President Bush. Gee, I wonder who gave him that idea. The Colorado theater killer was a registered Democrat, a staff worker on the Obama campaign, and an Occupy Wall Street I participant. I think they're kind of cool. I've gone shooting before. I'm not a Democrat who's totally against guns or anything, but I think that you should be responsible, and the responsibility should not just be based on who you voted for. Um, I mean, no, the, the picture of the AK-47 and also his sign in the first place goes to the heart of what one of the main reasons that they have these gun rights activists have is they say, well, they, first of all, they don't believe liberals shoot. They don't think they have guns. So, yeah. And the whole thing about, you know, protect your family, I go hunting with my bombs, then uh, it doesn't make any sense. In reality, it's setting up this war that's in their head. Mm -hmm. So, like, well, we need to arm our side. We don't want their side armed because yeah. we're, really, we're ready for a fight. We're ready for the next civil war because they're still living in the 1800s. So it, this, goes, this, is another, this is another aspect of it where you say, well, we can't sell to any liberals. <laughs> They can't <laughs> shoot us. They don't, we don't want them armed. Yeah. The Fort Hood killer was a registered Democrat Muslim. The Columbine shooters were too young to vote, but their families were registered Democrats and openly liberal. The Virginia Tech murderer wrote hate mail to President Bush. Gee, I wonder who gave him that idea. The Colorado theater killer was a registered Democrat, a staff worker on the Obama campaign. Most Besides? progressive gun store owner because he's thinking, oh, my God, wait, wait. Liberals might have guns. The rest of them are still <laughs> thinking that they don't even want guns. So they're like, oh, we have this whole industry locked up. We're going to, we have all the guns. And they like, this one finally thought, and he's probably like a genius. <laughs> That's funny. No, but like lots of Democrats, man, like to hunt or something like that. Uh, I've gone shooting with my dad. He owned multiple rifles, shotguns. He was a bow hunter for a long time. He hunted down deer and everything. I just don't have these fantasies of, of somebody like tries to rob a cafe and I'm going to be the guy who shoots right. him with my revolver. These are security camera images from the Walmart on San Mateo near Zuni. They capture a normal, busy August afternoon. Normal until this man with the dark pants strolls in behind the deli counter. His name is Felix V. Hill and the 54-year-old has a large knife. His target, his ex-wife, Joyce Cordova, working behind the counter. Vigil attacks, chasing her with the knife in his right hand. A different camera angle shows Vigil pouncing upon her in a corner, stabbing her again and again. 
But seconds later, at the bottom of the screen, a good Samaritan takes action. A 72-year-old man named Do Moore leans over the counter. He just happens to have a gun. Moore points his 9mm handgun and opens fire. He puts three bullets into the attacker, killing him. Amazingly, the woman is not shot. An unknown man then comes in and pulls Joyce Cordova away. She was stabbed more than nine times, but survived.